Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Brett Keen from God TV Radio. Make sure you check out my website, GodTVRadio.com. Connect with me on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, you can also check me out on VidMe and see some of my new content. If you'd like to support my channel, you can become a Patreon or do a one-time donation through PayPal. All links in the description. There's also a link to Discord in the description of every single video that I have. If you click on it, you can come in and chat with me and a bunch of other wonderful lads and lasses. Yes, yes, yes. Right now we have with us Max. Max Colby and Devin. Devin, would you like to share what your theological position and political disposition is before we get moving? Um, well, I'm a, uh, I guess you could, um, like an atheist. And I'm also a, uh, I'm left-leaning, uh, I'm a classical liberal, so, you know, those are my views. Okay, can you tell us exactly how long have you been a non-believer, what were you before, what sparked it off, the good stuff? Well, I have, uh, when I converted to atheism, I was, um, 12, and, uh, you know, I was kind of, I, I, I kind of, you know, uh, had questions like, uh, you know, if we go to heaven, uh, like, you know, when I die, um, am I going to be like a robot, you know, in heaven? Uh, you, you, know, you know, stuff like that. Um, y you know, I kind of, before I was a, uh, uh, before I was now, a what, atheist. What do, you mean, what do you mean by a robot in heaven? What are you getting at on that? Devin, what do you mean by a robot in heaven, if you don't mind me asking? I mean like uh, like a robot. Like I mean like, um, you know, uh, like if you want to do something, uh, you know, you might not be able to do it because God's there, you know. So that's kind of what I mean by that because you kind of have to abide by them by there. Okay, Max, I'm going to go ahead and provide you a link. You do realize as an atheist, you're basically saying that you don't have a soul, you don't believe in God, therefore your entire makeup is chemistry. You're nothing but a bucket of chemicals, an animated burger stimulated by your environment. It seems like the position that you take now as atheism is you are now that robot that you feared so much. Well, I still have free will. I mean, you know, I can, you know, go outside and, you know, jump around or I can, you know, stay in my house, have me a nice Coke. I mean, so are you like, saying you couldn't have done that while believing in God? You couldn't still go out, jump up and down, wear a coat, do whatever you want? Oh, well, you can still do that. But, you know, like in heaven, I mean, you know, if I wanted to uh, say something like uh, if I like if I got mad at someone and I say, you know, fuck you, um. That, you know, I might, um, you know, might not be able to because, um, you know, God's there and, uh, you know, kind of get mad at me for that. So you were concerned that if you treat people abusively that God's going to be upset with you about that and that turned you off? Well, not really, like, abusively, but I mean, you know, far to get mad, like, you know, and I might not be able to get mad up there because, uh, you know. And I don't feel I could be, you know, the real me. I mean, I would only be able to express, like, the good side, which uh, isn't the best, you know, really. Well, I hope that you understand this. This is something that Albert Einstein said. God doesn't expect us to, this is Albert Einstein, he says, God doesn't expect us to be successful. He expects us to try. You understand what the difference is? Um, I, I kind of get it. Well, go ahead and give me a, your interpretation or idea what you think that means. Like, God tells us, like, um, Einstein said, uh, um, God tells us to, um, try or something. Like, a... The quote is, is that God doesn't expect you to be successful he just expects you to try do you know what that means uh, yeah my interpretation is uh you know i guess would be he loves you for who you are i guess there you go Devin. so you do have your free will you do have your choices and on top of that god loves you um just as you are 
He just wants you to strive to be, you know, better and actually upgrade your, your behavior and abilities. And I don't see a problem with that. I mean, what does he tell you to do? He says, be nice to people, treat people the way you want to be treated. That seems like a pretty easy concept, don't you think? Uh, yeah, but I mean, you'd always have to kind of be like that up there. You do, uh, I don't know if Max wants to hop in on this and talk about this as well, but uh, in heaven, uh, they do have choices. In fact, the Bible actually shows very clearly that people were able to, or the celestial body was able to do and make choices of what how they wanted to behave. That's one of the reasons why the Bible teaches about what happened with the devil. You familiar with that? There's, there's, uh, yeah. There is varying views on that, by the way, since you asked my, my opinion, Brett. Uh, yeah, this is Max. I'm with the Escaping Atheism group. Check us out on escapingatheism.com. We also have a Patreon. But uh, there's actually, you go back over the 2,000-year history of uh, Christianity and uh, the the idea of what it takes to achieve salvation and, and all and what even salvation means and even what heaven is has been fiercely debated by Christians uh, for to all two thousand years of its history. There's a whole field devoted to it called soteriology. Um, I mean, there is a school of thought that once you're in eternity, you're not going to move or change. Yet most of the sources, like you said, Brett, do indicate no, you'll be able to. It's an open question, Brett, because is there time in heaven, or does time, does heaven transcend time? If tr heaven transcends time, then what can motion or change be like? It's a theological and philosophical question. Um, but I would say generally, the, the problem I have with simplistic Christian thinking, where I get into it with baptism and some others, is thinking that salvation is all about what you believe or don't believe that it's about accepting an intellectual proposition and Catholics and Orthodox and other Christians don't read that, that stuff about believe me and be saved. Those who don't believe will perish. We believe they're, those are being read wrong and out of context. Um, you know, when I was an atheist, I decided I was definitely not a Christian and fuck the Bible and fuck Jesus. And the Bible is stupid right around the time of, I was 15, I think, and I was functionally either agnostic or atheist for the next 30 years. Um, but I became completely unconvinced that atheism made sense. And over the last about 10 years since I tried, I, I, I gave up atheism in my early 40s. I'm an old guy. And I have found that the longer I looked at the time that I was atheist and I look at every atheist I've ever met, and while some are very clever and original thinkers, most, I think you're going to find the longer you stay just plain atheist and close to the idea of God and all that stuff, actually the more closed-minded you become. I don't know how old you are now, but uh, because it's something visibly I see in every atheist, and it did describe me, is this, if material science can't explain it, you're going to dismiss it. That tends to be the go-to thought when you're an atheist. Then the longer you're like that, I find the more bitter you are, the more nihilistic you get, the less hopeful you get, because um, you're closed off to things and you're closing out ideas. And we have actual scientific evidence of life after death. And I tell that to atheists and they just get mad and scoff and they don't even look at the evidence. And so, you know, we have scientific evidence that something intelligent is running the universe in current contemporary physics. It's not even weirdly mainstream. It's, it's, it's mainstream. Yet I find people who call themselves atheists don't even want to look at that evidence. So the only thing I would, I would kind of be on Brett's side here. I'm not trying to make you come to Jesus, but I'd get more interested in other ideas. Atheism is actually, if you look at it, it you're literally closing off ideas. This is what you're doing. Um, a, a curious agnostic has a lot more going on, in my view, than a guy who's just said, oh, I don't believe any of that crap. Yeah, I mean, you, well, were, you were talking earlier about the uh, astrophysicist that you had done an interview with, Max, which that is totally interesting to me. But you said something really fantastic whenever it comes to science. You have to assume that whenever you're doing mathematics based upon the universe, 
that they're going to be rational, logical, and mathematically coherent. And in order for that yep. math and all that to exist, you have to have some kind of pattern, which usually leads to a design, and the design has purpose and function. The entire universe serves as a purpose and function. Everything is yep. tuned and set up in place. So hopefully we get her in here. Would you like to tell people a little bit about that and where they should go to subscribe? Oh, sure. To sure. Please come check out our YouTube channel is escapingatheism.com. If you do Patreon, we're Patreon Escaping Atheism. Go to escapingatheism.com. You can find us there. We're not doing a Christian apologetics except on accident. You know, if somebody's making a false statement about Christians, we'll correct that. But we'll also, if we see a false statement about Jews, about Hindus, about anybody... Um, I've interviewed pantheists, I've interviewed um, uh, deists, you know, um, but the most interesting interview I did recently was with a Dr. Sarah Salviander. Uh, you'll find two sets of interviews with her. One I did a couple of months ago and a follow-up interview I did just the other night. The other night. Her name is Sarah Salviander, S-A-L-V-I-A-N-D-R. She's a, an astrophysicist down at University of Texas at Austin. Uh, she grew up, was raised an atheist in Canada. Um, while she was studying physics at an Oregon university, she realized she believed in God. And uh, it was more or less, you can hear her tell her story, but it was more or less the universe just made too much sense and opened itself up to scrutiny and was intelligible and orderly to such an extent it made no sense to her anymore that this was just all random, that something grand intelligent had to be driving it. Um, she became a Christian several years later after more study and more thought. Um, and what was fun about that too is because she's a real astrophysicist. She studies supermassive black holes, most of the stuff she looks at is 7 billion light years away. She's a real scientist and a real nerd and fun to talk to. And, um, you know, atheism made no sense at all to her. That's what she eventually concluded. And, uh, yeah, we were talking about lots of neat things. Like, literally live on the interview, I got to agree with a lot of things. I says, you know, um, Dr. Salviander, you're looking at a supermassive black hole about 7 billion miles away, right? Whatever it's called. Seven billion light years away, can you tell me that the laws of physics, like, you know, the gravitational constant or even the speed of light, can you tell me you know the laws of physics work the same out there? She said, no, I couldn't tell you that. We have no way of knowing if that's true. Everything we see is consistent that the laws of physics are consistent, but we don't know that. And she even admitted that, you know, if they were wrong and they varied a little bit or something, it would mess with her field. But it doesn't, she would say point blank, you have to take it on faith that the laws of uh, physics operate as they do, will con have always operated as they do, and will continue operating where they do, as they do, and that they continue to operate the same way everywhere else in the entire known universe. That's a faith statement you have to have just to do astrophysics. That's a faith belief you have to have. Nobody can prove that. Yeah, because um, nobody wants to get in a tin can and be thrown out in the space out in the middle of the abyss of darkness thinking that there's no accuracy or all this. So I don't think Well, it's I, seven billion light years away is the stuff she's looking at. It would be quite a trip. <laughs> yeah. You'd be pretty old when you got there. Yeah, we're talking so, yeah. life or death, man. Life or death. You gotta know what the hell you're talking about. Exactly. Well, I mean if you're talking about black holes, of course. It's not like if you're wrong about the black hole, that's going to be life or death. But it's just a known fact. It's something Neil deGrasse Tyson can't even admit. Neil deGrasse Tyson is into astronomy and physics. His entire field is, is dependent on faith beliefs up and down. And he seems obliviously aware of it. Like he has all these faith beliefs. I just want to say real quick, just want to say hello to Brett. I haven't seen you in a while. How are you doing? Doing hey, John. pretty good. Guys, I'll be right back. My daughter just walked in, told me something about he's pounding on the door. It's probably one of my relations. Be right back. Are you going to get a sledgehammer? All right, I'll be there too. I'll be right Can back. You, oh, and John, anybody... hold on. I'm going to make John a bouncer. This means that he'll be Excellent. able to unmute people and be able to kick people if they act like orangutans. Be right back. All right, sounds good. If you need me at the door, Brett, I'll be right there. 
Anybody who wants to inter- hear an interesting scientist who came to believe in God talk, go look for my interview with Sarah Salviander. And if you're into science, too, I did another interview with a former atheist named Cy Gart. He's a biochemist, and he also discovered God while studying science. So uh, he's an interesting interview on I, had, I have up on the Escaping Atheism channel, too. So anyway, that's all I got. Who are you, John? You know, regular with Brett? Anybody there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I'm Brett's Brett son. I'm, I'm Brett Jr. Are you, are you really? That's Wait. right. I'm his son. You didn't know that? John Gishala is Brett Keene's son? Yeah, John. Brett Jr. Brett Keene Jr. Yeah, I don't think I I've ever you. I think you're messing with me. You can ask Brett when he comes back from bouncing the guy at the door. Oh, if you're if you're uh, if you are Brett's son, good. I'm just you know. Uh, why aren't you called you know John Keen? I have my own, um, you know. <laughs> okay. Gishala you know. is his middle name. Gishala is his middle name. Oh, John Gishala. Well, my name is John Gishala because that's that's a uh, he was a. Uh, Jewish freedom fighter who fought against the Romans during the first se- second century. So, oh, interesting. John Gishala was a real John Gishala, anyway. Oh well, that's a, that's pretty historically interesting, actually. Excuse me for yawning. Shotgun Teletubby, what's your story? Oh, you know, I like Texas. That. I would. I would like that. It was. Yeah, that's real. Oh, interesting. <laughs> No, I am actually just tired. I actually am interested in Jewish history and the Jewish religion. I'm not hostile to serious Jews at all. Um, So um, the Temple era of Judaism interests me, and that history does interest me. I'm just literally tired, so I wasn't being rude. What got you interested in in that era of... uh, Why are you interested in second century Jewish freedom fighters? I'll call them Jewish rebels. Hello? Am I here? Am I the only one here? Uh, I'm still here. He I left. He left. Well, I, I was asking a real question. I wasn't really bored. I really was just tired. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, he's back. Okay. John, I'm genuinely interested. I, I just sounded bored because I'm tired. Um, uh, the actual the second, third century. No, we cannot hear you, John. So your mic's out or something. Uh, it looks like he's muted. Oh, he is muted. Let me fix that. There. Okay, here we go. So All what right, guy? Guys, I'm back. I uh, was one. Brett, Brett, is John here, your kid? Uh, he is Brett King Jr. Yeah. He's my virtual uh, adopted son. But uh, Max, are you able to hear it. me? Can you guys hear me? Can hear yeah. you. Okay. Yeah. Well, I I was wanting to suggest for you guys. Uh, I don't know how many of you. Uh, I know Max, you do videos. I know John does videos. You guys ought to open you up a VidMe account. Um, you don't have to re-upload your videos. You can simply do the link of your videos from YouTube. And it'll automatically put them over there so you have copies of them, as well as be able to expand your message. Wow, that sounds like a good idea. I mean, does it cost anything or? No, absolutely free. And one of the reasons I prefer VidMe over YouTube and stuff, but I still use YouTube to reach out to people, is uh, besides it grabbing the videos, putting them over there and doing all the work, it takes your thumbnails and your description so that's pretty cool. It doesn't have a downvote system. People can only share your videos or like it up if they enjoy what they're seeing. They cannot come over and manipulate the system and downvote your shit with bots or whatever stupidity they're trying to do. I mean, you can do a lot of that bot script commenting, downvoting. It's amazing. I'm going to check it out then, especially because there's another problem with YouTube is that they're censoring videos and taking channels down and demonetizing people right and left. I know some of the atheists have been having a problem with that the last few months, but they were doing that to Christians for years. YouTube has been crushing Christians, especially anybody who's 
Well, I, I myself, critical. I, I myself, Years. whenever I Max, myself, whenever I went down on my channels, they had already flagged the piss out of me. I knew I was going to lose my channels. So what I did was I privatized some of my videos and removed a whole lot of others and started moving them over to other video sites. They were killing my channels. That's one of the reasons why I got the hell out of there when I did. They flagged me over a video where I criticized uh, a My Little Pony cartoon. One of the ways I one of the ways I avoid them, and I they they I haven't even successfully reported me yet. Um, I release I refuse to monetize I, at least their monetization, and I, all my videos are Creative Commons, and I invite people to copy them wherever they want to. And that means I'm more dependent on uh, donations, but it's really hard to flag me. All my content, all of the escaping atheism content, is Creative Commons, and we invite people to redistribute it. Um, it's because we're sick of exactly what you're talking about there, Brett. Um, they will just, cause they won't like you because you're religious, especially if you're critical of atheism. They really don't like, Google doesn't like it. Um, Twitter doesn't like it either. Facebook doesn't like it. Although they're, I'm starting to see a turnaround on that. There's been a growth in Christians and other religious YouTubers. Um, um, I'm seeing a lot of pushback of the atheist bullying of a lot of religious channels. So Tide may turn, but it sounds like VidMe is a good, I mean, I should get over there just to protect my stuff, if nothing else. Yeah, it's, uh, it is wonderful. It's, here's, uh, here's my channel. You uh, will get the ability to get a button that's under your videos where people can do what is called tipping. Yeah, you can also put links to Patreon. I have put some really, really rough shit up there, Max. Some really hardcore stuff. I'm not talking about porn or weird shit like that. I'm just talking about I've, I've really been able to express myself and not have to be concerned with getting screwed with. And one thing about VidMe that you'll really like is you can actually contact them and talk to people. All right, you've sold me, sir. I'm going to sign up for VidMe tonight. I'm going to sign up for it right now and uh, start playing with it. You can, have uh, tonight. 20, you can have 20 of your videos sitting on that channel in less than 10 seconds. All you have to do is grab the link of the video, post it into the middle thing where it says post the URL to the video. You can also, you're going to like this, Max. Let's say that you've got some images or a funny meme that you made uh, having to do with science or some scientist said something goofy. You can upload that and actually have images as well as videos up there. Ah, that sounds pretty dang awesome. It really does. And then, Brett, you were telling me earlier to use some, to try using something called uh, OBS. OBS. It is a device for anybody that is interested. You know what I'm going to do, Max, because I like doing tutorial videos. John will tell you. I'm going to do a video where I teach people how to use OBS. I've noticed that other tutorial that is videos. Awesome. I will also teach people how to actually use Discord and how to do the functions and mess with the settings to get what they want out of it. Dude, please make sure to send me that. I'll promote the crap out of it and I'll use it. I'm sick of the, the censorship. I hear good things about Minds, but it's not the best for video. I hear good things about Gab AI, but not enough people are using it. It looks pretty low effort, so I appreciate you turning me on to it because YouTube sucks these days. I mean, they're just terrible the way they treat people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the you're right about non-believers screwing with Christians for years. And whenever my channel basically got caked, and uh, I've already said this on video, so it's not like this is some kind of secret, and I've already announced this a few times in the past whenever I got fed up. I figure if the, the atheists are not going to allow me to have my freedom of speech where I have nowhere near the nastiness that they have done to Christians, I just went around and I did exactly what YouTube suggests and encourages people to do. I have reported the shit out of a lot of these assholes and they went bye-bye. And I don't care. I've got no regret, no remorse. And I even did this. I know the advertising companies that had a problem with YouTube because of hate videos. Guess what I did? I sent the advertising companies fucking messages and links to the filth that YouTube promotes and endorses. And I don't care if well, it bothers anyone. I wouldn't. I would I normally in my old days years ago. I would have said, "Don't do that. Leave them alone. Let them let atheists say whatever they're gonna say." But my experience now thoroughly matches yours. Atheists on YouTube, as well as a few other social media platforms, they run in packs. 
they harass people, they lie about people, they false flag videos, they get channels shut down with false flagging. They even call people at home, you know, find people, dox them, call them at home, call their employers. I've talked to multiple people this has happened to. It's a serious issue. Um, and while I'm sure there are some religious people behaving that way, I have my real doubts that there's that many Christians out there going out in groups, group reporting people. I don't, maybe we should. Well, we not, seem to be I'm the only ones re- if, if somebody makes a video where they're just like, Brett, you're fat or. You know, your face looks dumb when you talk about God. I don't care about that. But if they make no, videos insulting my children and my wife and they oh, talk yeah. my docs or they talk about doing violence, and there's a lot of videos up there like that, I will fucking destroy that shit. And I don't even care. It, it doesn't yeah. bother me. I'm doing what YouTube wants us to do. Keep them, keep the place friendly and safe. I can no longer blame you. Is the thing I, I free speech idealism runs in the ground when other people, you know, you you fight for other people's freedom of speech, but they don't fight for yours. Well, for theirs, then. I mean, at some point, you got to go. You're just a patsy. If these people are going to behave that way, then they should get the same back. You know, that's how I see it. I. And I've got a worse reputation than you, I think, Brett. I mean, I'm re- I'm meaner to atheists than you, than Brett Keen, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I tell them too. I, I've told countless atheists who've come into my rooms. I said, "Look, if you want to make videos where you disagree with me and debunk me, fine. But there's no fucking reason whatsoever where you ought to like." make a video about like some 13 year old Christian girl out there and insult the way she looks and all that shit just so you can feel better about yourself. That's unacceptable. Well, that and, and just lying about what Christians believe and lying about what Christians teach and lying about our history. It's like, really? Especially because half the shit you hear, it's like it would take five minutes to debunk, but they call to be themselves the big skeptic rationalists. They don't get skeptical of anything they've heard that's negative about Christians. They just believe it. And uh, if that's the environment and you're in, if they're going to throw elbows, you're going to throw elbows back. That's what I say. Exactly. Welcome to the room there, Wolf God. You're going to need to learn how to mute your mic whenever you're not chatting. That way it doesn't cause noise effects or feedback. How you doing, Wolf? And John, how are you been doing? I've been kind of wondering when you were going to actually come into the Discord. If you're wondering why I use Discord, not Google Hangouts, you probably remember all the times we got trolled and there was so much delay, it took forever to kick people. And even if we did, they could just run right back in. As you can see, this is, uh, this is pretty damn compartmentalized and uh, pretty set up good. You understand, Sam? Yeah, it looks all right. Whatever's, uh, <coughs> whatever floats your boat, Brad. Yeah, I can, yeah, I, can, yeah, I can chat and not have to worry about somebody with the IQ of minus banana coming in here giving me any shit. So what's up, well, here, if, you wanted to hang out, if you wanted to hang out on the back porch, was hey, man, how you doing, man? You, you having a good time enjoying that mac and cheese situation? Yeah, I'm also enjoying you. your mother. How about that? Well done. Let's get ready, you stupid. Oh God, that's the, he's that loser that we ran into a while ago. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh goodness, I should not have said that about his mother. I probably would never take interest in her, for sure. All right, so back to what we were talking about. <laughs> I can't believe the guy. He comes over here just so he can insult the piss out of somebody. Isn't that amazing? But did you see how quick that was, Max? Did you see how quickly he vanished whenever he started the well, chat? I saw the name Wolf God, and one of the things I've noticed is atheists who just want to be jerks call themselves the god of this, that, or the other thing. I think that's going to offend us. Like no, it just makes you look like dumb, or, or it's amusing, right? But hey, come all the way here just to be rude. Well, we think so much better of you now. <laughs> I, I'm so impressed. He came in to be rude. I he showed us. There's no God, obviously. <laughs> now, now you see this, Max. He's able when you kick someone, they can return after their little tiny ass timeout. But he won't be able to talk unless I uncheck the server mute. That's one of the cool things about Discord. Once you broadcast somebody in Google Hangout, they can keep coming in and be unbroadcasted. Not this way. So he can go on to typing since he can't control himself in voice. 
Now, if he keeps on acting like a dick monkey, I can hit ban, and then he's locked out of the room until on Sunday I clear everybody out again. Every Sunday I clear assholes out. Oh, that's a neat idea. I think I'm going to be like you, Brett. I cannot wait to see your tutorial. I'm going to follow it slavishly, and I'm going to steal all your ideas. And then one day, when you're not looking, I'll kill you in your sleep and pretend I'm Brett Keen because I look a little like you. You're going to have no. to get in line on that there, Max. I've got a huge <laughs> base of people who want to take me out. <laughs> I get the threats all the time. I, it's just like, oh, man, I... Atheists, good lord, they cannot take what they dish out. They can't take 10% of what they dish out. They really can. <laughs> it's it's ludicrous. And, I mean, Penn Jillette blocked me. Uh, all I was doing was talking like he talks on his show. Um, didn't he block you? or he? Oh, you sent him some stuff on suicide, and he just lied to you, didn't he? He didn't. Uh, after that, I, I think whenever he noticed that I did a video showing the tweet and talk, and he didn't really get involved too much. I don't think he's really got balls. He doesn't seem like the type of guy where he likes to run his mouth as long as it's just him and his silent buddy next to him. But when it comes to actual debating discussion, he will fail. I have never seen him actually argue with anybody of, of, uh, of credibility. Oh, no. Oh, no. Um, I mean, I've, I've had him make attack videos. TJ's made attack videos on me a couple times, and they're always stupid. They're barely worth responding to. And because TJ can't can't just admit he's right. If you believe there's no God, you you have no it's incoherent nothing. You have no morals, you got no ethics, and you got nothing you really believe in. And he can't deny it. You know who else is like that? Freaking Thunderfoot, Dr. Phil Mason. He you know, he he seems smart and some of his videos are good and he can be real funny, but he will never talk to somebody who's at least who's on his level of intellect to talk about religious stuff at all. He's just stuck in this ludicrous 19th century idea that everybody's primitive and needs him to save science for us. It's, eh. Well, the, uh, uh. the atheist community has decided to put Thunderfoot into their, what I call their hellish uh, circle. Uh, what, what it is is they get to a point where they just decide one day uh, all together that they're going to throw an atheist into it and then attack him nonstop until he goes out of his fucking mind. And Thunderfoot has found himself over the whole Sargon issue. Oh, of course he has. And that's his, and, but this is just the atheist follies all over again, isn't it, Brett? We see this every year or two. Somebody becomes the bad atheist who has to be destroyed. Or, or, or they go up in team matches, you know, the left wing ones versus the right one, or this one's not liberal enough for that one, or this one's not pure, and this one has a science heretic stance. And they, I mean, one of the reasons I left atheism more than 10 years ago is I got group ganged up on those, got by those guys, by a bunch of atheists. And you know what my crime was? PZ Myers led the charge. You know what my crime was? I said that arguing constantly with creationists was counterproductive and the you know you should as an atheist you should just stop arguing all the time with creationists you're wasting your time it doesn't do any good that's what i said and i had to be destroyed for saying that that was more than 10 years ago but i had to anti-science supposed you know global warming denier, AIDS denier, this denier, that denier. I was evil. I was a witch. I was a heretic. I had to be destroyed. And that was from my fellow atheists. And that was kind of, that wasn't what made me decide there was a God. That's what made me just decide, you know what? There's something wrong with atheism. <laughs> I need to rethink some shit. I, uh, I recall the thing that got, Whenever I was a non-believer, what set them off, I would do rooms like this on Stickam, and we would have tons of non-believers come in. And I remember when guys like Jesus Freak used to come in and other Christians, and they were totally respectful and nice to me. They would explain to me why it is they believe what they do. And um, I had this mindset where I wanted to actually know what is the truth about the universe. I was open-minded, willing to hear people out. I would let Christians talk for as long as they wanted. An atheist would private message me in the background and say, Hey, Brett, why don't you 
make fun of him for his marriage issues? Why don't you make fun of him for this? Why don't you get on to him about this? And they would try like demons to get me to go after people's past instead of actually just discuss the Bible and God and all this. And I was like, I'm not going to treat people like shit just because you've got some kind of problem with God. It was clear to me that they didn't lack a belief in God. They wanted to hurt people. They wanted to make people embarrassed and humiliated. And uh, that's what yep. I noticed. And when I told, when I started speaking out publicly on video as well as text and doing my chat, I remember saying to people, look, when I make a video to a Christian, that isn't your fucking cue to go over and start insulting and treating them like shit. I want to be able to have a discussion with them. If you just push people and bully people, people won't listen and they won't open their mind to what the hell you're talking about. But they never yeah. listened. And that pissed me off. I, I, I've, I've seen the same behavior. I've seen it over and over so much so that it's like that's when it finally hit me that really what has to be done um, because it, it's a malevolent movement and it's a malevolent mindset. And they keep saying we have no we're not a movement. We have no beliefs. Bullshit. They believe real specific things. And 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 it's they, they really try to hurt people. They really try and break them down psychologically. They try and convert them. They try and make them feel like garbage about themselves. They're frequently they're running off of scripts nowadays. Some of them really, you know, they're recruiters for occult movement. Some of them, um, and that's why I started the Escaping Atheism Project. We give atheists grief, and we do it all the time. And we're rude to them, um, which they're not used to. We're we're we we just don't give them an inch. We we confront them on all the contradictions in their worldview that they the things they believe they can't back up the faith statements they all make the irresponsible generalizations and you know when we started doing that everybody thought oh, i was crazy and the atheists constructed a narrative that i'm crazy but over time i've accumulated like 10 volunteers we're looking to fill out a 12 it's only you know the first year i didn't know what i was doing re rebranded about in december i think of last year so seven months ago, and we've been growing ever since. And the main thing is to tell people, look, we don't care what you believe, but bullying believers, which is something atheists do a lot of all the time, that needs to end. You know, if you're going to be an atheist, I mean, when I was an atheist, I was never that big of an asshole to people. Um, well, my, but thank my issue, Max, and I don't know if it was your issue, my issue was with religion and politics and yada, yada, yada. I didn't have some kind of like thing against the people. I understood completely why it is people would want to believe. And I was open-minded and I was more than fine with becoming friends with no matter what denomination or belief system the person was. And right. I really did not understand. Say this to them. Say something ignorant. Insult them. Get them pissed off and all this. And I'm like, no. What for? What's the point? I just want to have a chat. All right. Looks right. Like, looks like we got some more people going on here. Well, actually, guys, I'm going to bow out. Thanks for having me, Brett, and uh, everybody come check us out. But anyway, thanks a lot, Brett. I look forward to that video you're going to do, and uh, I hope we can do a one-on-one -on -one again sometime pretty soon. There's going to be